Hello everyone, I'm Perry the Fridge, and welcome to the third and final part of my introduction to Final Fantasy XIV achievement hunting series. In part two, we discussed three major categories of achievements, and went into detail regarding time-gated achievements, which are one of the biggest challenges achievement hunters face. If you didn't catch that one, I recommend checking it out before heading into this one. You can find the link on screen or in the video description below. In this video, we will discuss what I call time-limited achievements, the third category, which may sound similar to time-gated achievements, but in practice is pretty different. This category has two different sections to it that I would like to cover. One you're probably already familiar with, and another that is a bit more exclusive to 14, or at least the MMO genre. And finally, since this is the last video in my intro series, I'll also include a short section to highlight some of the communities out there I've come across that I found helpful to be a part of. So, let's get started. Time-limited content is a staple of modern gaming. Most games these days have seasonal events to celebrate holidays or other occasions, and these events usually come with goodies or content that, after a certain amount of time, will no longer be available. Final Fantasy XIV is no exception to this, and this even extends to Final Fantasy XIV's achievements. In fact, there is an entire section of the achievement log dedicated to these. The game has a number of seasonal events every year, that each come with unique achievements and they are only available for a limited time. These, like any other achievements, add those sweet, sweet Chivo points to your total, and usually come with some sort of unique title or item rewards as well. As one might imagine, the fact that these unique achievements never make a return places them at the top of most Achievement Hunters' priority list. Missing these means permanently missing out on possible achievement points, the thought of which would leave us a bit like... So, when these roll around, make sure to get them done while you can. Square Enix always updates the Lodestone with news on upcoming events like these, so keep an eye on that and plan accordingly. With that said, I do want to mention the scoring aspect of achievements like these. You may remember in part 1, I mentioned achievement score leaderboards that exist for Final Fantasy XIV. There are no official achievement score leaderboards for the game, but there are a few third-party sites that let players track and compare their scores to others. In the spirit of being fair to players who haven't been around since day one, these achievements that are no longer available are usually removed from total achievement score for the purposes of ranking. So, no worries if you're a Shadowbringers baby like me, you can still compete with the best. That covers the first half of the time limited category. For the second half, in addition to seasonal events that are removed from the game once their time expires, there's another type of content in the game that I feel is important for achievement hunters to be aware of. This content isn't truly time limited in the sense that it is content that isn't technically removed from the game, but it is significantly easier to grind achievements for during a specific time period. There aren't very many recurring instances of this, but a great example of this is the PvP game mode Rival Wings. Rival Wings does not have a roulette option, and so doesn't have any enticing rewards that get players to join the content regularly. However, during the seasonal Mog Tome events, Rival Wings has these tomes temporarily added to its reward listing, encouraging players to play the game mode frequently. It's not uncommon to have several hour-long queues for Rival Wings when these events aren't active, and sub one minute queues when the event is on. This creates a fantastic incentive for achievement hunters to work on achievements for this content when these time-limited events are active, and I recommend prioritizing working on these when players are actively playing them. Another type of pseudo-time-limited content is expansion-specific content. Often, new content is introduced in an expansion that is intended for many players to participate in. Prime examples are Bosja and Eureka the Forbidden Land. Once the expansion has ended and Square Enix introduces new content, these older bits of content that work best with large numbers of people often struggle to fill parties enough to make grinding the content easy. There are a number of reasons for this, but part of it is an unavoidable part of the content life cycle of MMOs, so it's a good idea to try and identify content like this and work on the related achievements while the content is still highly active. The turning point for content like this is usually when a new expansion drops. As I mentioned already, the prime examples of this are Bosja and Eureka. For Endwalker, there isn't really an equivalent to these pieces of content, so I can't really give an active example to work on as of the making of this video, but I feel it's important enough to mention regardless. If you miss the boat on past content like Bosja or Eureka, however, all hope isn't lost. There are active communities out there who still work on the content regularly. You just might need to look outside of the game for a Discord community or something similar to help you find groups for them. 
With just a little bit of effort, there's virtually no content in the game that is impossible to find groups for. And on that note, this is a good segue for me to introduce some of the helpful communities out there. Here is a list of some of the communities that have been the most helpful to me during my adventuring. You can also find this list with links in the video description, along with a link to this slide to share as needed. One thing to note is that many of the communities on this list are NA focused, since that's the data center set that I play on. For players in other regions, Achievement Lobby is a global general achievement hunting discord, and you can look in the Final Fantasy XIV directory server as well to find servers for the specific content in your region. For NA players, I highly recommend NA Achievement Haven, a Discord community full of helpful, like-minded hunters who can help provide support and information as you continue building your score. Big shout out and thanks to them for helping me put together all the resources for these videos and for their feedback in the early stages. The remainder of these communities are more specialized, focusing on the details for specific types of content that hunters will need in order to tackle the related achievements. Of particular note are CEM and CAFE, who help run the aforementioned Bosja and Eureka content regularly, despite the fact that they aren't new or current content. The rest have experts in each of their respective areas willing to help new players, so I recommend paying them a visit when you decide to look into those achievements. And that about wraps it up. If you have any additional questions or any specific achievements you would like more information on, please feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching if you got this far, and I wish you the best of luck if you decide to launch into the Endless Achievement Hunting Grind. I have several other videos planned to cover specific big hitter achievements and how to tackle them as well. If you enjoyed these videos and want to see more, make sure to remember to subscribe, as it helps me grow the channel and will notify you when I release new achievement hunting content. Thanks again, and see you next time.